In section 4.2, you will graph quadratic functions in vertex or intercept form. Another useful form of a quadratic equation besides standard form is vertex form. y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. To graph this quadratic equation, or this parabola, again we'll make a table of values. We want to know the vertex. In vertex form, our vertex is right here, h, k. h is subtracted from x, and k is added to the quantity squared. So the vertex for this parabola is 1, 3. Okay, then <coughs> I want to know how wide to draw this parabola. So I'm going to choose two values on either side of that vertex, maybe 0, 2, and put them in my table of values for x. Okay, now this a value in my equation is positive 2. Because it's positive, I know that this parabola should be opening up. If a were negative, the parabola would open down. So I'll complete my table of values. I'll put 0 in for x. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And negative 1 squared is positive 1. 1 times 2 is 2. And 2 plus 3 is 5. Now I'll put 2 in for x. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. And 2 plus 3 is 5 again. So I can graph 0, 5. And I can graph 2, 5. Now this is a narrow parabola opening up. So I'll draw it through those points. And then I'll uh, draw the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry, again, travels through that vertex. It's a vertical line that divides the parabola into two equal pieces. So this vertical line happens to be x equals 1. Another useful form of a quadratic equation besides standard form and vertex form is intercept form y equals a times the quantity x minus p times the quantity x minus q. In this form, this factored form, p and q are the x-intercepts. So in my table of values, I'm going to first put those x-intercepts. p is subtracted from x, so in this case it's 3. So I have intercept 3, 0. And negative 1 is subtracted from x. I want to think of this quantity as x minus a negative 1. My q value is negative 1. So graphing 3, 0 and negative 1, 0, I know that my parabola is going to travel through those x-intercepts. My parabola, uh, the equation has an a value of negative 2. That tells me that this parabola is going to be opening down when the a value is uh, negative. Okay, now I need to locate that vertex above these x-intercepts and that x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be halfway between those x-intercepts. So all I need to do is take an average of p and q to find the x-coordinate of the vertex. So I'll add 3 and negative 1, and I'll divide by 2. So I get 2 over 2, or 1, for the x-coordinate of the vertex. And then I'll substitute that into the equation to solve for y. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. So I have negative 2 times positive 2. That's negative 4. And negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. So I know that this vertex is at 1, 8. And I can now draw the parabola that's opening down through those points. and locate that axis of symmetry that travels through that vertex again. It's the vertical line x equals 1. In this example, we're going to write y equals 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 3 in standard form. Remember, standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. 
and we're given vertex form. y equals 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 3. So to put that vertex form into standard form, all we have to do is distribute. So we'll multiply x minus 1 times itself. And x minus 1 times itself is going to be a trinomial. So when I distribute, I'm going to have x times x. That's x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x, but when I start over, negative 1 times x is another negative 1x. So negative 1x plus negative 1x is negative 2x altogether. And then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So the binomial x minus 1 squared is equal to this trinomial, x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, distribute 2 through that quantity. I get 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. And then I still have to add like terms. So in standard form, this equation is y equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 5. In our last example, we're going to find the minimum or maximum value of this function, f of x equals negative 12x times the quantity x minus 9. This equation is actually in intercept form, and I'm going to show uh, my p-value by writing it as negative 12 times x minus 0 times x minus 9. And now I can see that my p-value is 0 and my q value is 9. My a value is negative, so I know that this parabola is opening down. And this parabola opening down is going to have a high point. The function is going to have a, a maximum value because the parabola is opening down. So we're looking for a maximum value, and that maximum value is going to be the y-coordinate of the vertex. So we need to find the vertex. And the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be located halfway between those x-intercepts. So we're going to take an average of those x-intercepts in order to get the x-coordinate of our vertex. And that is going to be 9 halves. To get the y-value, we substitute in 9 halves for x into our equation, and we simplify to solve for y. Now when I um, subtract inside uh, parentheses here, I'm going to want 9 as halves, so I'm going to write 9 as 18 halves now. And then I'll have a common denominator. Okay, so multiplying first these two factors out front, I can cancel the factor of 2 top and bottom, so I'm left with negative 6 times 9, or negative 54. And now inside parentheses, since I already gave myself a common denominator, 9 halves take away 18 halves is negative 9 halves. And one more product. I'll cancel 2 top and bottom. 2 goes into 54 27 times. And now I just need to multiply negative 27 times negative 9. And that's going to be a positive product and it looks like 243 is that positive product. Now that's the maximum value for this function. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 2, 6, 10, and 16 on pages 246 to 248 of your textbook.